All right, hello and welcome to episode nine of Diggs Sideline Podcast. Uh, uh, as always, we are your hosts. I'm Sam. And my name is Pat. And Pat, we are in week five of the NFL, Vikings at New York Giants. Yes, we are. Both teams are two and two. Both have had kind of semi-sloppy starts. The Giants will get into it. Eli Manning's been benched. Right. Daniel Jones is in. You know, I think we've got a lot to talk about. Absolutely. Both. I, so, like you said, we're both two and two. We both kind of kind of had hot and go starts. Um, and honestly, I think this is a must win game for both teams without a doubt. And I'd like to, if we following the trend of the Vikings this year, we are beating up on mediocre teams and struggling against winning teams. Absolutely. Let's get a W. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and that's just it is I think that the benching of Eli Manning and the playing of Daniel Jones has sort of revitalized the team. They, they, they feel like they have a new team identity and, you know, both of their losses came uh, when Eli Manning was playing and both of their wins came from Daniel Jones. So as far as this New York Giants team is concerned, with their new team identity, they are 2-0. Definitely. And granted, against the Bucks last week when Eli or uh, Daniel Jones had to come in, um, the Bucks missed a game-winning field goal, but still. But what, still. But what he did that game, I was watching it at work. Uh, don't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just told the I world. I just told the world. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> It was awesome. The the comeback he basically put together when he had to step in for Eli. And so I, I'm a big fan of new rookies coming in the league. Absolutely. And you Daniel know, Jones took a lot of criticism he when he did. came into the league. You're he was right. drafted. Everybody was like, oh, you're reaching for him. I think uh, he went before Dwayne Haskins. And everyone right. was like, Dwayne Haskins is the man. What are you doing? Well, the Giants were supposedly supposed to take Haskins. That's what I'm saying. So there was some beef exactly. there. Exactly. Yeah, right. And you know what? I, we got a chance to see both of them play this week head we to did. head. And Daniel Jones looks to be more like the man than Dwayne Haskins. He does. And, and again, we'll get into the game here in a second, but Daniel Jones has looked very comfortable in the pocket. From the little bit I've seen of him, he's very composed. He's not yeah. kind of running around like his head's cut off. You Absolutely. Know? He's 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 playing like a rookie quarterback in that he's, you know, they're they're running a lot of quick slants and things like that, some high percentage throws right. for him. Um, and he's able to escape the pocket and run for the first down. So that's, that's uh, some very good qualities of rookie quarterbacks. And... Some of the negatives of rookie quarterbacks is you see them making pretty bad decisions, and he his decision making isn't isn't the worst in the league. Yeah, no, for sure, and it helps that he's got Barkley with him too, and he's been actually not really with him for the last couple games due to that high ankle sprain. Right. So you know he's playing with a uh, backup. What's his name? Gallman. Yeah. Um, and he did pretty well. Yeah. If so we want to, let's get into the like, game. Yeah. yeah let's, let's let's dive into it. So. Uh, it was uh, Washington at New York. They were right. playing at MetLife Stadium, and it was uh, it started out like it was going to be. Yeah, it was <laughs> it was it was a pretty abysmal game to watch. I'm not going to lie. Uh, Case Keenum, uh, he got the start for the Washington Redskins uh, through an interception, which to me. I don't really think that interception was his fault. Yeah, that that first one, I did catch that one. That was on a slant route. It was a tight coverage. The corner was you know, sticking to him very well. So give the defense credit there. Right. And the ball just kind of popped up in the air and the linebacker come in and picked right. it off. So uh, I didn't watch the game live. I had to go back and, and watch the tape on it. Uh, so when I was just looking at the box score, I saw Case Keenum had the interception. Then I saw Dwayne Haskins enter the game. So I thought that it was, you know, they benched Case Keenum right after the interception. That actually, that didn't happen. Case Keenum played for a few more, a few more drives. And then uh, Dwayne Haskins just decided to go in and Dwayne Haskins played abysmally i think that it'll be interesting to see who starts for the washington redskins next week just because you know case keenum played better but dwayne haskins is their future and their whole fan base is is basically begging for to see more of dwayne haskins there's there's that and then i do want to give haskins a little pass i think it's always difficult when you have to come in true you know in the middle of a game i, I like to your brother john mentioned it back you know when we had bradford who got hurt against pittsburgh and then Keenum came in that game on the road, and, and he really right. stunk the bed. But right. you can't well, blame him. And they, the, the commentators talked about that during the game is, you know, the 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 reps you get with the first-team offense is is huge. For sure. You know, and he didn't get any of that um, throughout the week. So he didn't get to really work with, with those guys. I think one of his uh, interceptions was uh, he threw the ball, I want to say to Vernon Davis. It was one of their tight ends. And he threw the ball before Vernon had had a, had a chance to look around, and they were just their timing was off, and the ball came right as he turned his body. Ball hit him right in the chest, and it just popped up, and the defender grabbed it. Oh yeah, there you so, go. So yeah, it it. I mean, there so there's miscommunication there. He threw two other interceptions on the day. I, one of, I, I think the Vernon Davis one he can get a pass on, but the other two were were very bad balls, and he's just he's he's not ready. 
for in, sure in my mind yeah so I, I think it'll be interesting to see just i guess you know we're talking about the giants today but if haskins going forward next week who's starting right yeah you know what this is actually the second week in a row where we're playing a team that had previously played the washington redskins that's you know, true so the again, bears and now again, the giants again i uh <laughs> I said it last week that the Redskins played so poorly, it's going to be really difficult for the Vikings to develop a game plan to say, hey, this is what the, the Redskins did well. Let's try to exploit that because they didn't do anything well and we don't know what to exploit here. Um, so it's it's going to be difficult for us. Uh, so yeah, so let's get into the game. So then um, the Giants came in and they scored a touchdown on their opening drive. Wayne Gallman, he yes. had that touchdown and he was wide open yeah. that and that touchdown. was that was a bit of rpo he you know a fake yeah. handoff there and then he broke off to the right there and he, wide open he broke off to the right and i have no idea there was defenders that were staring yeah. right at him they just weren't they just weren't trying to cover down and here's where we can praise daniel jones because yeah. you know what he did he went through every read he yeah. went he went all the way across the field and his last read who shouldn't be that open was wide open he's like oh here we go yeah exactly you know so i mean give the guy credit for going through his reads and not panicking exactly he, his fundamentals look very very yeah. sound and especially in the goal line when there's not much room and there's more tight tight coverage and right yeah and i know a lot of the vikings fan base we we i personally got a lot of heat when uh i said that oakland is going to be a, a tough game and uh and it turns out that they were pretty easy and everyone was like oh you, you guys don't know what you're talking about oakland's going to be a tough game i mean people are going to say the same thing about the new york giants but i'm going to say it again with uh daniel jones as their starter they are two and oh so they they're they're a football team that has talent. You know, the with OBJ gone this year, uh Sterling Shepard has been stepping up as the as the uh number one wide receiver and he's been doing a phenomenal job. So the, the, this team is dangerous. This team is very dangerous. For sure. And I'm actually gonna counter you, Sam. I'm gonna say that this is gonna be this is gonna be a cakewalk. Really? <laughs> I'm putting it out there. In New York. This is going to be, okay, maybe not a cakewalk to the sense where it's like 41 nothing, but I'm going to say we handedly handle this. I think Zimmer is going to dial up the pressure, and this the offensive line is not going to be, you know, anything crazy, and I I think Zimmer's going to dial up the pressure. We're going to make this kid uncomfortable, and even looking at the the rushing stats against Washington, you know, Gallman only had 63 yards, and I think he had like a 3.3-yard average so that's that's nothing to kind of write right. home about so I, i'm saying that we're going to be able to get pressure and they're going to be forced to kind of pass the game all game and um and zimmers i think zimmers team's going to bounce back right. like we do yeah you're you're right i i think that our defense is going to be able to take care take care of their offense but watch me eat my words <laughs> exactly well that's just it is that i mentioned earlier in the podcast that this is a must win game for both teams and it's it's a must win for for two reasons number one you know, I, I think last year the Vikings went eight and eight. We were we were the best of the worst, basically. Yeah, right? exactly. You know, we 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 were undefeated against teams that were under five hundred, and we were completely defeated against teams that were above five hundred. So this is a game where it, it's going to be a test for the Giants to say, hey, can we beat you know this this team that is you know the the best of of the worst, basically. And I, I hate to call the Vikings the best of the worst, but let's face it, that's kind of where they're it's at true. right now. Yeah. Um, so it's 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 going to be a litmus test for the Giants to say, hey, mm-hmm. are are we a team that can that can call ourselves a top tier team? So it's going to be it's a it's a test for them. It's also a test for the Vikings to see how they face adversity. I mean, the, we're coming off a big loss. Uh, I mean, not not a wide margin. I still sixteen to six, close game. Uh, against the best defense in the NFL. Uh, I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> but no, it, it, it's a test. It's going to be a test for us to say, hey, can we bounce back? Can we put the last week behind us and and get a win on a game where we really should be getting a win? Yeah. Um, guess who the Giants are getting back? I'm going to put you on the spot. Do you know who? They're not getting. They're not getting uh, Saquon back, are they? No, I don't think so. I think his return is sooner than we initially expected with that injury. But Golden Tate is back. Really? Yes. For us? Yeah, oh. I know. They're number one wide receiver, and, and we know him from Seattle and then the Lions. And pers- and there was that one game against the Lions where he scored in overtime, I think. Yeah. And it, look, I, I've been a big fan of him. He's a great player. And for them to get that weapon back for Daniel Jones, I think he's going to make sus- a difference. He was suspended, right? It was I think four, he had four like four a game suspension? PED four-game suspension. Oh, sure. Yeah, And he was saying that he, he's got like a fire underneath his butt, and he's ready to 
He's ready to come is what he's saying. Right. So, I mean, looking at looking at the NFC East, the Giants are definitely still in the conversation. The Cowboys lead the NFC East uh, uh, with a 3-1 to one win loss. Then the Eagles are 2-2 two and two and the Giants are 2-2. Two and two. Yeah, that's kind of like the NFC North. Like, everyone's still within a game, if you will. Yeah. The, what are the Packers? Are yeah, three Packers and are 3-1. and one, Bears are 3-1. and one, Lions are 2-1-1. One and one, And the Vikings are 2-2. Two and two. Yeah, so while it's we... tight. While we're overreacting to the Packer game and Chicago... It's still a very, very, very close division. Right, and anything can happen. And we, I, we all recognize. I just that. want to address the Vikings fans right now because I, our, we do have two losses, and they are against it. They are both division games, which is horrendous. But they are two. They were two losses against two very good teams, and we are either super hot when we're when we're beating a team twenty eight to seven, or and we're like this is the best team in the NFL, and then you know when we lose. 16 to 6 to the to the best defense Sam, in the NFL. Sam, it was 16 to nothing. It was 16 no, to 6. No, it was 16 to nothing. It was 16 to 6. 16 to nothing. But go ahead. I'll pull up the box score. It was 16 to it was 6. 16 to nothing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, I I think that we just it, it it's fun to get emotional. It's 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 part of why we're emotionally invested here, but Jeez, the the ups and downs are just okay. wild. But let me address the comment you just made. And it's valid is what you're saying. For sure, we tend to overreact. But I think what you're seeing in everybody that I talk to, my Viking friends at work and everyone, there is this new kind of frustration. This is a separate frustration with the Vikings that I haven't seen in years. Yeah. This is like a true what the bleep is going on type right. of frustration. Well, I mean, we've been for, for three or four years now, we were like, God, this is the team. We I have know. all the pieces. Yeah. And there's no you know? reason when you look on paper and you see the players that we have and like the, the money that's being dished out, it's like frick almighty. I mean right. I mean Pete Peter, whatever his name is on NFL Good Morning, I don't watch that too often, but he had the Vikings on the Super Bowl. Yeah. You know, so I'm saying some team some people were expecting big things out of us. Yeah, absolutely. That's I, the frustration. I'm, I'm still expecting big things out of us. I, I am too. Listen, I okay, we recorded that game. That episode literally 30 minutes after it. So that was fresh and raw. <laughs> it was fresh and raw. I've calmed down. We're two and two. You know, the next teams are three and one. You know what I mean? So we're, it's, right. it's okay. So, uh, so let's take a, uh, a deeper look here at the, at the Giants offense. So we, we talked extensively about Daniel Jones. He is, he is a, a good rookie. Um, he, like I said, is fundamentally sound and he can get the ball where it needs to go. Um, and they're, they're Pat Shermer. Good friend of the good friend of the team. Very good friend. Uh, he's he's scheming for his rookie quarterback. Like I said, they're throwing a lot of they're throwing a lot of slants. They're doing a lot of RPO. They're giving him a chance to escape the pocket, uh, things like that. So the so they're giving him opportunities. So what I'm seeing uh, out of out of the Giants is a lot of shorter shorter passes, which means our linebackers are going to need to be spot on with their coverage. Um, a lot of runs uh, up the middle. Um, especially with uh, Saquon out. I don't think they can get outside the tackles as much because as good as Wayne Gallman is, I don't think that he's speedy enough to to you know take a pitch and, and get outside the tackles. Uh, um, so I'm seeing a lot of runs up the middle, a lot, a lot of quick p- passes, which honestly, if you look at the, the teams that have beat us, that's how they've been beating yeah. us is those uh, quick passes, get the ball out of their hands and, and basically negate our pass and, rush. And if Zimmer doesn't make adjustments quick enough, for those kind of quick passes because there was way too much space against the Bears. And if, if anything's going to tell us about playing a rookie, it's going to be giving him easy passes to get him going. Right. You know, and he's got, like I said, Golden Tate is back. Sterling Ste- Shepard has played pretty phenomenal. He had nine targets last week. Yeah. And then Evan Ingram is a, I've been a big fan of him as a tight end. Oh. He, he's great. Yeah. He is, he's phenomenal. And then I know from the defensive side, um, they traded away a player last week, last year to the Redskins. Of course, I'm drawing a blank on it. But they got Jabril Peppers, who yeah. the Browns initially signed, and I'm a big fan of him too. He's one of those kind of in college. He was one of those dual threats who right. could do punt return, cornerback. He was doing it all, you know. So, yeah, that's what I've got on the Giants. So yeah, I mean, and so like it's like you said, Jabril, Jabril Peppers. He had uh, he he didn't have. I don't believe he had an interception last week. No, he did. He had the pick six, right? Yeah, Jabril Prepper, he had he had the pick six, and then uh, 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 Janoris Jenkins, he had the two other, uh, uh, two of the other four or whatever. So, so their their secondary is talented. Uh, they they play heads up football. There was multiple times where the the ball got tipped, uh, went up for grabs, and the defense came down with it. So they they have a capable secondary. I do think that it's a secondary that our 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 guys, Adam Thielen and Stephon Diggs and. And anybody else, I, I do think that they're they're a beatable secondary. Um, 
but we just got to be able to pull the trigger. Yeah, we got to pull the trigger, and I have something to say about that when we get there. But um, I know Redskins were probably playing out of shotgun for the majority of the game, seeing that the game was 24-3, yep. but they only got three sacks on Washington's poor that's the other thing. Line. That's the other thing that I wanted. Yeah, exactly. So it, their pass rush is not is is not elite. At yeah, all. and along with trading that safety uh, to Washington, they traded a middle linebacker, defensive end. I think it was Vernon uh, Vernon Vernon something to yeah. the Browns as well. So they right. kind of moved some pieces around. And, and I know JPP is gone too. Yeah, right? JPP's been was gone. Was this yeah, his first so, year gone, or was he gone last year too? I think I, one of the two years. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So I from the defensive end though, I can't when I look at the roster. Nothing jumps out to, jumps out at me right. that I'm like I know that guy you know right so I think this is going to be a really good test of say hey let's try to pass yeah. the ball because if our offensive line just wakes up in the morning and eats a, a couple Wheaties we'll be able to protect Kirk here's what Get I'm gonna time Sam here's what I'm gonna say all right okay if we lose this game everyone's panic meter should be alarming. <laughs> throughout minnesota into canada <laughs> it should be all over this is the game if we blow it and kirk disappoints again panic i i, I would agree with you i i i tend to not drift towards panic mode just because that doesn't really help anything <laughs> sam I, I kid you not this is the first year that i've had this kind of frustration and anger I, with with the team I, honest I, to god i think no you're, you're absolutely honest right to god. If, if we lose this game uh, and we and we lose it because Kirk can't pass the ball. I think this is it for Kirk. I think we just eat the cap and try to get somebody else in there who's gonna who's gonna make it work. I honestly, I think we might play. I I, I think we could potentially make a play for Case Keenum because yeah. if he's getting benched and we could use him over here, I think that would be a oh, a big okay. storyline. The NFL would eat that up. The the media headlines would just they would just. But, they would okay, love it. but but why would Washington take Kirk Cousins' salary? Cap? I'm not saying they would take Kirk Cousins. I'm just saying we bench Kirk Cousins, bring in Case Keenum, oh, trade somebody oh, else. You know oh, what I, I mean? I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. Gotcha. That would be wild, <laughs> and I think Minnesota would be rejoicing. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> to return, then we can make a second return of Case Keenum, and I'll make it I better. <laughs> I know. And if uh, you go all the way back to episode one, Pat said he doesn't believe that Case Keenum will be playing when we play against. He won't. Nate. But if he's playing for the Vikings, <laughs> <laughs> oh. no, I think you're right. I don't think it's time to necessarily put panic mode on the entire season and the whole team, but it's definitely time to take yeah. a hard look at Kirk and say, look, you, you're not the guy we thought we and, were. And I want to talk about a video I saw today. Go there ahead. was, there was a throwback video. It was uh, Kirk cousin and his wife were doing a gender <laughs> reveal party. Oh my gosh. And it was so bad. I, I'm going to plug it in. We'll plug it in. And so basically Kirk, you know, his wife is waiting all happy and Kirk is thrown at this big question mark it's side. a huge and, cardboard box and he pegs, three yards away he pegs the bottom left corner and i think kirk kind of like stopped for a second his wife was all happy but like there was a moment where kirk's like crap i almost just missed three yards away <laughs> a huge big box with a oh, big question gosh. mark on it not moving not getting not being defended <laughs> it's it's bad. We, we got to show i didn't, i hadn't seen that he that was it. the first time i saw it he hit it yeah <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but on that note, here's where I want to go with with this discussion. Okay. There were some comments made by Adam Thielen, and I think they were justified, and I'm a big fan of, you know, our other star players speaking up like that. He didn't he didn't target him, he didn't, you know, say all these negative things. He just made a generalized statement about the team and about Kirk Cousins not connecting on right. many passes. Right. I'm glad you brought that up because I wanted to talk about that too. Everybody's making a big deal about yeah. it and saying, oh, you know, I see the the gift from last year where they're arguing on the sidelines and it was like our last game of the year. Everyone was frustrated. We were finishing 8-8 eight and eight and everybody was frustrated. That, so so everybody brought that back up when the when Adam Thielen was, were, was making his comments. It's just, it's wild to me. I, I cannot stand the media. I, although, I know. Are, the, are we... Are we considered media? I now? think we're good media. I we? think we're good media, <laughs> but uh, but no, so I I just can't. So the media they they get all they 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 get all upset when and and fans too they get all upset when mm -hmm. these players and coaches they get asked a question and they give a cliche answer and it's like oh we put we're looking towards next week and we're trying to put this one behind us and it's it's just super cliche and can't really glean anything off that but when you get a guy who's coming right off a loss super frustrated didn't call anyone out if anything he I, I thought he more called the game plan out and the and the coaching staff um and yeah i mean kirk 
Kirk is definitely responsible for for a lot of the the comments that he was making, but it was real and it was it wasn't targeted at anyone. It was just it was a, a broad it, statement, it was a genuine yeah. frustration, and everybody's spinning it to to make it to be what they want to hear. Right, right, yeah, and 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 to, I can't remember who I saw one of the you know one of the analysts or whoever it was, but but he made a point that you know you can't look at this at a negative light because Adam Thielen as a player for his whole career has been the underdog. He's got the chip on his shoulder from D2 yeah. Mankato to practice, not getting invited to practice squad player to all this. So, so what I'm getting at is he has, he has that fire in him. Exactly. 24 seven. And you, you have to be like the most yeah. competitive dude on the face of the earth to scratch and claw your way to the NFL. Exactly. And that's why and that's I'm, what he did. He exactly. And, claws and that's why NFL. I'm saying this was completely blown out of proportion. And I'm glad he said it though, because I think right. management and they coaching need to hear, need to hear it. it because, yeah, you know, I don't know what's going on in the locker room. And if they talk, as passionately as they do after the game like that, you know, but when emotions are raw and kind of like you and I talk and things get said and right. they mean it, you know, exactly. they're, they're meant for it. Exactly. I just think that everybody just needs to, to, to not look into things and, and try to spin what other people say to fit their own narrative. I think that's, I think that's a bit of a dangerous game. Yeah. Uh, but like you said, this is going to be the perfect opportunity for us to pass the dang ball because right. the uh, New York pass rush, is is palatable their secondary is burnable and i think that we can pass the ball i do think we're going to have some troubles running the ball in between the tackles this week from what i saw they were able to collapse uh interior pockets pretty well pitch the ball pitch the ball yeah <laughs> pitch, pitch the ball please and get- for the love of god if i don't see more than Five shotgun plays this game. I will lose it. Seriously. I Kirk, will lose it. Kirk is under center more than any other quarterback in the league. Just mix it up. Mix I, it up. Yeah. I, I mean, why are you and I saying this? Why are we saying this? I'm a nurse. You work in construction and fixing all that <laughs> stuff. And, you know, but like, my gosh. Yeah. It's it's pretty wild. I mean, I mean, we all saw it last year and Zimmer saw it. And the, 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 the fact that we weren't running the ball and he had a – he even he – couldn't I mean despite his commands to run the ball it wasn't happening so you're right we, we they do need to make some changes and it just needs to get it just needs to get done and I mean I just the last thing and then we can kind of move on from it but even if Kirk needs the five yard slant routes just do it right. get the ball in Thielen and Diggs hands and then things just come like it right. gets them warmed up it gets everybody more involved you know right. absolutely so, and magic happens with those two but um yeah, and I guess the last thing I can kind of touch note on because I was initially, yeah, because initially I thought that I was giving Cousins a little bit of a pass because I thought the Chicago secondary was, you know, playing just outstanding man-to-man coverage and nobody was open, you know, and that's why we were seeing all these little dump-offs to Ham and Cook, you know. Right. But but there was a little a uh, little thing I saw on the internet and there were three pictures that someone took took pictures of and there were players that were wide open and again i know chicago's defense can get to the quarterback and that affects your thinking and your mental game clock and all that but there were guys that if if cousins just went through his progressions fast enough we had 15 20 yard connections and you know i might i'll put those up but right it was yeah (laughs) when when i saw when i saw those those uh those little graphics of how just how open her receivers were it was frustrating. I, I, I'm a, I'm a Kirk Cullins, Cousins apologist. I'll say I'll try to defend him to the end. But, uh, but yeah, when I saw how open they were, it's there were it's, some that were wide open. It's pretty, yeah. it's pretty damning. You know, and again, I'll, I will post those in. But there was the one on Thielen had his guy beat again down the sideline. You just yeah. had to lob it up to him. Diggs was wide yeah. open in the middle of the field. On a sp- yeah, exactly. And and speaking of apologies, because I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Cousins did another, and and you know what? What I'm getting, so Cousins did another classic. I'm sorry, I reviewed the tape. Adam Thielen was wide open. I need to get him the ball more. You know what, dude? Stop, stop apologizing. I would have been better off if you had literally just not said anything. I think. Yeah. Then to hear you kind of sit there with that mopey face and just apologize again for another piss poor performance that I know is not all on your shoulders, but you're the freaking quarterback who's getting paid eighty four million dollars. I I don't want to hear another apology. I would rather just not hear you say anything. Yeah. Don't say anything. Yeah. I, I think he gets. I think he he wants to he wants to bear the responsibility. I know, but ah, but yeah, I, I I know I know what you're saying. Again, like I said, Sam, this is the first time in a long time that I have felt this kind of these feelings. Rage, yeah. Yes, and I don't. I feel sick when I think about <laughs> it because it feels like I'm turning on my team. <laughs> no, I, I it's it's a righteous anger. Ah. I, I get it. I mean, we like you said, you look at our roster and this 
this should be the team. Yeah. But we just keep making these mistakes. And on that note, I think I'm afraid of what the future is going to bring. You know, because I don't know life after Zimmer anymore. I don't know right. life after Spielman. I don't know life. You know what I mean? So it's it's yeah. like you feel like like you just said this was this is supposed to be our team. And we went through a a long period of I mean the Brad Childress era, the Mike Tice era, where it's just like yeah, the Leslie Frazier era. Yeah. Lest we forget it. I mean it was it was bad. Um, and so we finally have a coach that we feel like can, can lead a football team in the right direction. And we're just, we're close, but no cigar. So, all right. So, uh, one more piece of analysis here. I want to talk about how our defense can manage their offense. Uh, we kind of talked about what our game plan is going to be against their defense, but let's get, let's talk about our defense again. I'm from their offense. I see a lot of slant routes. I see, see a lot of RPOs, which is gonna, it's, it's going to burn us. So our linebackers need to step up into coverage, and I don't care if it's Anthony Barr. I don't care if it's Eric Wilson. I know that Eric Kendricks can do it, but that middle of the field, like between between the line of scrimmage and the and the first down marker, that's going to be – there's going to be a lot of balls coming that way, and our linebackers need to be up to the task. For sure. Yes, and I want to just quick apologize. There's It's Wednesday. There's sirens going off, and <laughs> I think – I'm sure you can hear it in the mic, but we apologize for that. Um, again, we're not professionals. <laughs> <laughs> we're just a couple dudes. We're a couple dudes having fun. So forgive us. I'm sure you guys don't care. But uh, yeah, no, that's a really good point. It's it's going to be up to the defense, I think, to kind of set the tone and lay it out for Kirk I, to get the game going. I think I think we'll be able to get to Daniel Jones. I think if uh, we don't, I mean, I I'm going to be concerned because there's no reason why Hunter and Griffin aren't producing a little yeah, more. Yeah, I, I think we'll be able to put the pressure on. But honestly, with the pressure. That just means the, the the ball is going to come in the linebacker's direction a, a whole lot more because it's got to be short. He doesn't have time for a play to develop, and it's going to come out. Right. So our linebackers really need to be on right. the ball. And on that note, I think you're going to see if if we do get enough pressure, you know, Daniel Jones is going to be looking to dump it off to his running back. So, yeah. you know, Barr or Kendricks, you know, stick to that guy like glue. Right. Well, and that, unless and we're playing zone, but and that's the thing that worries me is since our linebackers are going to be so busy in coverage. Are, how much are we going to be able to blitz? I don't. I honestly yeah, think that we, we'll only be able to send yeah. four all day. Well, and that's why Chicago had four wide receivers the whole game. Yeah, it's flawless. Exactly. <laughs> there was no reason why Zimmer didn't have his his cornerbacks on press coverage. Yeah, there was no reason. Again, it's, we're done with that. It, I'm sorry. I'm, just, I'm. I know. I, I still okay. think about it. All right. So we. Uh, so let's uh, let's talk score predictions. Yes. So going Go back, ahead. going Go back, first. going back to week one, we both had this listed as wins. Uh, again, I still believe it's going to be a win. Uh, the line on this game, Vegas is setting this as uh, Minnesota Vikings by six. Okay. So they, the, if if the fans aren't putting their faith into the team, the, <laughs> then Las Vegas is. So <laughs> I think I think that's a I think that's a that's a good stat line. I, I don't think, you think that should be a little higher? Maybe a little bit. Or I know a little they, more of a spread. They give uh, they, <clears throat> so they, so. Here's the thing. They they typically give about three points to the home team. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So if you're yeah, looking yeah. at talent, it's probably like nine to, yeah. to nothing if we're playing on a neutral field. Right. Um. But yeah. So Vikings by six. I think that's probably accurate. I think that they'll be able to get the best of us on their opening drive. Uh. But I think that we will. Um. I think that we'll figure them out and, and shut them down. Let's see. I think that we'll win twenty four. To 14. 24 14. Okay. I kind of had it in that ballpark. Uh, you stole my 24 number. I'll say, um, no, I'm going to stick with 24. Yeah, I, go I ahead. feel like three touchdowns and a field goal. And I think we're going to 24 10 is what I'm going to say. 24 24 10. Yeah. All right. I had yeah. 24 14. Pat has 24 10. So uh, we will uh, see how that goes. All right. So join us next time on the next episode of Dick's Sideline Podcast.